Hi, my name is Karen Devon. I'm from Toronto, Canada. I'm 38 years old and I'm a surgeon at the University of Toronto. Um, so it's a bit of a long uh, journey, but I think uh, it's hard to know really what inspired me to do surgery because uh, that took some time. But in terms of medicine, um, I'm, I think I was inspired at a pretty young age. And um, I think my parents really uh, sort of instilled empathy in me. And so um, I definitely remember being a kid who kind of worried about other people or saw people who were ill and wanted to help them. And so I think that part... I sort of grew up always wanting to do medicine um, and then those other little decisions along the way um, are a little harder to define but uh, I think it came from my family so Um, you know, I think um, in terms of support I've been really privileged again um, with family and sort of um, attaining my goals just by working hard. I think the major obstacle is to try and figure out that elusive so-called balance. Um, I don't even really I love the term work-life balance, but because uh, I think sort of separating your work from your life is a bit artificial. Um, but I think it's always hard to know, you know, when to sort of, um, you know, a, there was a lot of studying involved, so it was hard to know kind of when to back off or take breaks or accept, you know, less than perfect. So it's, it's mostly sort of self, I think the biggest obstacles were myself and sort of trying to figure out where my balance lay even before I had the career, just even kind of working towards it. Um, so I think from an attitude standpoint, most definitely things have changed a lot in the past 20 years before I really started my career. Um, so for example, I just announced that I'm expecting and uh, the response was overwhelmingly supportive. Um, from a more logistical standpoint, um, it's a bit more difficult to manage and probably will pose some challenges and even financially, um, there's less you know, security than perhaps if I was working in a different field um, in terms of maternity leave and things like that. And so, um, you know, overall, I think there has been a really positive change and it's definitely uncouth to not be supportive in that way. Um, but the system hasn't yet really adapted. Um, I think people can speak up. So, you know, there are a lot of things that get said that are so-called jokes. And, you know, we can all <clears throat> just listen and let it go because it's actually pretty hard and sometimes takes a lot of energy to kind of fight each and every one of those very subtle things. Um, but I try to. Uh, I'm not always successful and I don't always because, again, it takes a lot of effort. Uh, depending on the social situation, but I think that if we spoke up a little bit more about things that came up in just everyday conversation and made some of those things unacceptable, um, that that would start help making strides. Something that comes up actually so often in my life, people use the term wife beater for a tank top all the time. And every time someone does, like I've made it my mission and like I'm sure they think I'm really annoying. Um, but like when people do it, they're not trying to be rude or, or sexist at all. But like I always bring it up. I'm like, why are you saying that? And like it's just, it's so interesting to get people's responses. But that's just like a little example of like a term that we could just get rid of. Um, so I'd like to see global equality. I mean, we can say we've made great strides. We know it's not equal, but that's okay uh, for now. Um, but certainly in the global picture, there isn't equality. There's, um, you know, there are just so many issues facing women, um, whether it's within war or poverty or whatnot, it's definitely accentuated um, for half the population. So in my lifetime, if we could tackle that um, in some way, that would be wonderful.
the best lesson to teach young girls and women is to read and travel because I think that you know aside from formal education which you know school is good um, I think probably just opening your eyes up to the world is probably the best education um, and will kind of make our culture more accepting and kinder and so for me um, I've always loved reading and I've always loved traveling and both of those things I think has sort of given me that perspective on our world so Well, I mean, I think you definitely need things outside of of work, um, even if the two are intertwined strongly. Um, for me, one of the major things, I'm a huge foodie, and so uh, I don't just eat because I need to nourish myself. I really, really love food, both cooking and going out and sharing um, with others and trying new things. So for me, that's really like almost one of my favorite activities in life. I mean, I think um, if there's something that you see in your future, you should go for it, no matter what. Um, but on the other hand, I think you have to have some flexibility. So, for example, I knew I wanted to do medicine. I always thought I'd be a pediatrician. And then when I actually experienced the different specialties, um, it really wasn't for me, and I you know, took a different route. Um, so I think probably in any case, I mean, I think we often think that the decisions we make right now are sort of so critical and that they will alter your life forever. And they may in some ways, but I think you just, I think, um, a, you know, you should aim for the top and aim for your goals, but maintain some room for flexibility and for life happening. <laughs>